I'm going to start this, uh, this video by doing something uncharacteristic for me. And I'm going to read a CNN article, which is true. This is from August 20th, 2021. Fact check. Biden claims Al-Qaeda is gone from Afghanistan. Then the Pentagon confirms it's still there. Embarrassing! So, this is from Daniel Dale at CNN. Washington, defending the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan, President Joe Biden said at the White House on Friday, look, let's put this thing into perspective. What interest do we have in Afghanistan at this point with Al-Qaeda gone? We went to Al Afghanistan for the express purpose of getting rid of Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan as well as, as well as getting Osama bin Laden. And we did. <laughs> Facts first. Biden's claim that Al-Qaeda is gone from Afghanistan is false, as his own administration acknowledged soon afterward. Following Biden's remarks, Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby told reporters, quote, We know that Al-Qaeda is still a presence, as well as ISIS, in Afghanistan, and we've talked about that for quite some time. Now, I hate CNN, but I figure that this will be my little insulation buffer against the bitch asses who might find this video and say, oh, you're just going to read from Fox News. You're nothing more than Tucker Carlson. <laughs> no, uh, that's CNN saying Joe Biden was full of shit. And why does it matter? Well, because... Um, the U.S. has been running a counterterrorism operation in fucking Afghanistan since they left. It's, 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 it's fucking exhausting, but also very amusing how many times I get to say I was right. How many times I get to say I told you so. Because... I wrote articles, two articles, for agorisnexus.com. Y'all can go visit the site and support it if you want. Um, I wrote two articles for Agoris Nexus. One of them said that the, the, the U.S. will not leave Afghanistan because it's too profitable. And the other one was about how they basically made the Taliban. How the Taliban was funded and trained, etc., through offshoots of the U.S. government. Both of those are true. You can, like, look the... Uh, all of my sources are sound. And, and I, I fucking got ridiculed for saying that the U.S. wasn't leaving Afghanistan, but now there was a fucking airstrike in Kabul that killed uh, a fucking alleged mastermind behind 9-11. Uh, the, the drone strike in Kabul that killed Al-Qaeda leader Al-Zawahiri. Uh, and he warned terrorists that we will take you out. You remember when I said that the U.S. wasn't done in Afghanistan? You remember when a bunch of people wanted to ridicule me over that? You remember when I kept my fucking composure because I know I'm right about this shit? This is for you. We don't even know that they got Osama bin Laden. But isn't it fucking funny 
that they could get this guy by an airstrike, but they couldn't get Osama bin Laden by an airstrike. Right? Isn't it fucking funny that they just dropped the body into the fucking water? I, you know, when I do really good work, I don't hide it in the ocean. When I, if I, if I did something awesome, my, my first goal wouldn't be to hide the evidence. But they got this guy by an airstrike. Just a drone was enough. Fucking what? What? So, this is what happened. Is they did an airstrike and they took out a guy in Afghanistan. They took out um, Ayman al-Zawahiri, who allegedly oversaw 9-11 with bin Laden who was a CIA asset, let me remind you, Tim Osman. They did that. They, they funded OBL as Tim Osman. They funded him through Operation Cyclone. They kept it going with his camp in Coast. And then... Once they had enough people there that, that they could claim more threats, then they had the war on terror. And an excuse for a bunch of justice. Huh. And now Biden is saying justice has been served when a country the U.S. allegedly pulled out of had enough on-the-ground intelligence to conduct a successful airstrike. One that they couldn't even conduct to take out the other guy. So they're clearly still fucking in Afghanistan! Or they have assets there, like the Taliban they funded. And it wasn't just during the Operation Cyclone thing either, that was just like during the formative years, right? They sent like tens of millions of dollars to the Taliban to criminalize opium. And then opium was criminalized and um, they had a bunch of opium. So they sold it and exports massively increased. And the Taliban made a fuck ton of money. And that's how the Taliban maintained presence and relevance prior to 9-11. And then post 9-11, they maintained it because they were suddenly a terrible people, right? And so was Al-Qaeda, and then ISIS when that later came along, and ISIL, and Al-Nusra, and all these splinter factions of things the U.S. government was involved in. And you know the funny part is how many uh, anti-war Democrats are being all like rah-rah anti-terror now, um, basically sounding exactly fucking the same as George W. Bush, right? Those people are telling us that Trump is the bad guy for hosting a golf tournament. Hmm. Hmm. You know, Biden sent a huge amount of, um, what, uh, money to the military industrial complex to all of these major blood money people. He did that so that he could send that to Ukraine, so that he could send a bunch of fucking equipment and bombs and shit to Ukraine, right? That sounds Bush-like to me. Biden was an architect and takes credit for writing the draft of the Patriot Act. That sounds Bush-like to me. Uh, Biden was responsible for the withdrawal from Afghanistan 
where he left the basically U.S. puppet government of Taliban a bunch of fucking weapons and a bunch of bases and shit. And he said that, why why should we still be there? Al-Qaeda is gone, despite the Pentagon and everybody else knowing that's bullshit. He said it because he needed his base to believe it, and they will eat any shit, even if it sounds exactly like George W. Bush. That's the truth. The truth is that his base will repeat blindly whatever he says, even if it sounds exactly like George W. Bush. So George W. Bush with that mission accomplished meme behind him, just picture the same fucking thing, but this time with Biden and Ayman Azawa Yuri. So yeah, Trump hosted a golf tournament. And they're saying that because it's Saudi Arabia funded, like $25 million prize from them, that that's somehow evidence that Trump is in bed with the Saudis. Maybe. But who did Biden go to immediately as soon as he said, fuck you to Russia? Huh? He went to the Saudis. He was like, please give us oil. Please capitulate. Please help us with our agenda in your fucking territory and region. And I think they told him to go fuck himself. But, like, they were the first people he went to. For fucking sure. And the U.S. is still backing a Saudi-backed genocide in Yemen. Despite what they did to Jamal Khashoggi, the Washington Post reporter who had the audacity to go against the House of Saud, the richest royal family on the planet, partially due to the petrodollar that organizations like NATO uphold. Organizations that he is all too happy to support. The audience at this Live Golf tournament, they fucking uh, chanted, Let's Go Brandon. Fucking hilarious irony, because they're all on the same team. It was held at the Trump National Bedminster in Bedminster, New Jersey. And yeah, they're bad for the LGBT community. You know who else is bad for the LGBT community other than the House of Saud and the Saudi government? Ukraine! There are so many human rights abuse reports in Ukraine with regards to the LGBT community. So they can claim that going against Trump right now because of this golf tournament, is somehow awesome for the LGBT community, but they're fucking full of shit. So what if Trump, Tucker Carlson, and Marjorie Taylor Greene were at this fucking Saudi-funded golf tournament? The Saudis are in so much of U.S. politics and corporate fucking business that it's stunning and Biden is all too happy to work with them so don't tell me that this is a difference between the two especially not while Biden is literally proving me right about my statements regarding Afghanistan he didn't want to leave He just wanted the Taliban to clean some stuff up for a bit so that the U.S. could march back in there and fucking get their attaboys. It's a big club and you ain't in it. You know? And maybe we have a little bit more to worry about than a golf tournament. 
But that's what the big party Democrats want you to think is the real problem. Not the fact that we got Jim Crow show in office. <laughs> the guy the guy can write landmark anti-crime legislation and in state mandatory minimums and he can draft the Patriot Act and he can support every major war and he can be a massive hawk the likes of which basically mirrors George W. Bush and he can do it all around the same time um, as the massive coalition between clans in Iraq where the clans in Iraq like let me check how many of these um, fucking th there, are, there are large amounts of clans 20 of them which have signed a covenant, this is from the Middle East Monitor, stressing that they will work to support Palestine and the Palestinian cause, quote, until the liberation of Palestine and realization of Palestinian rights, end quote. Shehab News Agency reported on Sunday. Almost like countries with iron domes supported by the U.S., aren't very well liked by people in the region. Almost like that's not going to be different when Ukraine gets their own Iron Dome. Almost like the Warhawks love Iron Domes and strategic uh, munitions deposits that, that can be used by host countries. Um, they love arms deals. They love petrol deals. They love fucking massive trade deals. Because they get to seem very liberal and very progressive while doing the same shit George W. Bush did. And the same shit George H.W. Bush and Clinton and Nixon. All down the line. They're all on the same fucking team. And there are a bunch of Democrats acting like because Biden oversaw one airstrike that killed somebody in Kabul. And by the way, there was some collateral damage. I'm sure we'll be hearing about that and also some blowback. Um, but because Biden killed this one guy, he's suddenly a fucking star-spangled awesome leader. The U.S. is plunging into recession. We're getting the Great Reset. We're getting biometric identification, privacy-free currency. We're getting all the stuff that I said we were getting that's going to be really fucking bad for everybody but those in power and profit. We're getting all of that from a president who's acting exactly like George W. Bush and the same kinds of people who used to oppose this stuff, they're now suddenly cheerleading it. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. It's hilarious what passes for progressivism. It's hilarious what passes for leftism these days. All you gotta do is support Biden, who is anything but progress who is the same entrenched establishment in support of the same entrenched establishmentarians and on the same team as Trump. But yeah, you're totally on the right side of history because you compared a golf tournament to the assassination of a guy allegedly behind 9-11. Meanwhile, comparable shit could be brought up, like Trump's assassination of uh, Soleimani, right? But you don't want to do that. You just want the adulations of supporting your guy and opposing former guy, and you don't recognize that they're the same guy, puppeteered by the same guys. 
That's why Nancy Pelosi's jetting over to China right now. Because they're all on the same team. And they're figuring out how best to bilk you and rob you of your freedom and have you cheer for it. But me, I'll be over here being right all the time, even though I'll still be mocked for it and I'll still be pushed out of the movement, whatever movement the movement is at the time. Because I would much rather smash the fucking state.